Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie, and welcome back to a DraftKings UCL Soccer DFS Sleep Breakdown. It's been a while, a couple months since we had the last one, uh, since the group stage ended, so I'm happy to get back into it. It's a smaller slate now that we're into the knockout rounds, so it'll be a short video here, but uh, I'll cover what's important, what everybody needs to know. In terms of the games, we got Man City Copenhagen and Leipzig Real Madrid. So, yes, it's another Man City slate, another two gamer Man City slate, which is even worse. But uh, in terms of lineups, projected has Man City like this with uh, the three center backs and kind of the hybrid center back midfielder. And John Stones, it'll probably be right. Pep's been rocking it more often than not lately. In terms of set pieces, Kevin De Bruyne is on everything now. We saw him just put up incredible, incredible numbers against Brentford when they had, like, I think the league record amount of shot on targets and, like, just some monster scores for this team. And then more recently than that, we saw Holland score a brace against Everton, so he's kind of getting back to form. So this is kind of a true full-strength Man City team now. I hope they rotate a little bit. It's not this exact team since here. Like, yeah, it's going to be hard to cram all four of De Bruyne, Foden, Holland, Doku. So I hope for a little bit of rotation, maybe a Nunez in for one of these guys or something, just anything to – make it a little bit easier. But in terms of Copenhagen sets, in this team, it should be largely Goncalves, maybe a little bit of Achori. Not 100% on them because I think they're, like the Copenhagen's league isn't running right now. They have like some extra tournament happening. Like the, I, I don't know what, it's like some other cup and has no uh, data for it. So it's hard to really research. Um like detailed statistics on them. But that's what it was earlier in the season was mostly in call this and a little bit of a chore. In terms of Leipzig, Real Madrid, the big news recently is Jude Bellingham will not play in this game. He's got some little knock that's going to just, it's some short-term issue. It's just going to keep him out of this game. But uh, that makes things super interesting since he's the best Madrid player on paper lately, and without him. It's still, it's still Vinicius Jr. Rodrigo, but Raheem's a pretty big drop-off from Jude. In terms of set pieces, Tony, if it's this lineup, Tony Kroos on everything. We've seen Modric in the lineup sometimes with no Kroos. We've seen them both in the lineup together. If it's Modric, no Kroos, it'll be Modric Monopoly. If it's both of them together, then that's where they get a little bit murky. They kind of both take in varying amounts. It depends on the game. Sometimes you'll see Modric take more. Sometimes you'll see Crows take more. But they usually they both will take a little something each when they're both in there. For Leipzig, David Raum uh, splitting with Xavi Simons, but Raum takes the majority of their set pieces. All right, those are set takers and lineups. Let's go price by price. Most expensive forward on the slates, Erling Holland, and shock to nobody because he's just the best forward in the world. I don't even think that's a debate really anymore. Maybe not the best player, but definitely best fewer forward. Look at these numbers in the UCL. The one game he didn't get a goal contribution, he still had nine floor. I could see something similar happening here against Copenhagen, a team where Man City are probably going to dominate even more than they probably do anyway in the Premier League. So for Cash, he's probably just a plug. Like he's kind of the city piece that people gravitate towards not named De Bruyne. Vinny Jr., I don't know how much ownership he's really going to get. I feel like a lot of people are just going to just stack city forwards. Like you've got a ton of options, whether that be Doku or Foden. And I assume they're all going to have Holland in cash, so it'll be him and then everyone else for that second spot. For GPP, getting off of Holland, I think, is already a way to get pretty different in a two-gamer where there's not a ton of ways you can go. But just fading Holland in GPP, I think, will already be a pretty big differential. So... 
there's Alvarez. If we see him and like they rotate De Bruyne out somehow, it'll be an Alvarez monopoly. If that makes him a really good play. I love him. If the, like he's the new De Bruyne. If there's no De Bruyne, if he's in with De Bruyne, he just becomes another city roulette piece. He's been getting pretty good points just on his own without set pieces. There's Bernardo. Bernardo's very, very position based. Like Pep, we've seen him play him in just any position on the field, even like defensive, defensive midfielder, or attacking mid. He can play or on the wing as a wing back. Like he, he could be anywhere. Um, he's kind of cooled off a lot from his early season form, so I don't love him here considering some of the other attackers. There's Rodrigo. I think Rodrigo's going to be super low-owned. I think that's a pretty interesting GPP play. For cash, I just wouldn't bother. He's had these really good UCL numbers. He's not been quite as effective in the league, but he's, he's definitely a forward option. A lot of different forwards. Like the, the, This two-gamer, like as much as there is little options in most of these positions, the forward's the spot that's the most loaded. If they have Hoselu in, I like that a lot. He's not the most pretty player, but like he puts up pretty good numbers for Real Madrid. Like they feed, they all feed him the ball a ton if there's no Bellingham. So I think that's a pretty interesting play. Uh, yeah, there's Doku. Like all the Man City guys are kind of be who I'll be targeting in cash. I'll just have a City stack mainly. But like Openda, set, like Openda is a pretty good price here. Real Madrid aren't going to dominate the ball like a City would. I, I expect this game to be pretty open, pretty end-to-end. -end. So, like, Openda is not bad for 7,700. He's usually the most expensive guy on these eight-game Bundesliga slates, and this is only a two-game right here. Look at the drop-off in prices from, like, Doku Openda. Then everyone else is just cheap. There's Sesco. He scored at the weekend. Uh, he's all right, I think. I don't know if he's my favorite play but i wish he was a k cheaper i'd be a lot more interested and for six i'd rather go up to pender down to someone even lower than this there's a chori uh he's not a bad player i just don't think that this is the slate when it's man city although we've seen them like city have given up goals to these vastly inferior teams in the points we've seen in, in the past we've seen young boys score on them we've seen Red star score on them. So I think for GPP, you, I could see one of these Copenhagen guys maybe making a goal and they'd be worth punting. But for cash, meh, not, not really interested in that. Likely just doing city roulette there. There's Jude out. Uh, let's see what they have for him. I had a great ankle sprain. So, yeah, he, he's not going to play. There's Kevin De Bruyne. He's the first guy in. Uh, just play Kevin De Bruyne. Simple as that. I probably have him in every team. Like, there's not really any reason not to for this price. He hasn't really – he hasn't played UCL yet, so I think they have him underpriced just because there's no data they have that the algorithm is using for him. So he's a pretty generic price, which uh, makes him – you make you just have to play him. There's Nunez. That is ridiculously expensive. He was like 4K in the group stage games, and now they've made him suddenly 8. I'm not interested in that, especially if De Bruyne is in. There's Grealish. He's just been kind of basically out of the squad. Just does not get any time on the field, really. It's just the very the smallest amount they can give him when the game's already over. Uh, I still think he's a little expensive, too, anyway. Rodri, I think this is a little much for him. Not really interested in 7K Rodri. I might have a sprinkle in GPP just because there's only so many ways you can go. And a guy like me who does a bunch of builds, like there's only so many combos I can do before I have to have a little bit of these kind of not big name city pieces like a Rodri, like a Bernardo. There's Tony Kroos. I think this is a little much for him, too. You're going to have to have a second to third team somewhere. Like I could see the argument for him. 
I, I might have him. It's just whether I'm willing to sacrifice a city piece or not to play him. There's Shavi Simons. I like that for GBP and Oscar Bob too. Oscar Bob's probably a lock if he plays for that price. Like he's a, the cheapest kind of city roulette option you have as an attacker. But Shavi Simons, as I was saying, another good Leipzig attacker. He's cheaper than Openda and he's splitting set pieces. So I like that in his Leipzig exposure. There's Modric. I hope we have him and no Kroos just because he's cheaper. And I feel like he's probably the more attacking. So I like Modric. There's Brahim Diaz. 5700 is not a bad price for him. I, I, I'd i play that potentially. He's in the Bellingham role. I, I, I could definitely get behind it. Uh, Fede Valverde. That's not a bad GBP play. Probably not for me for cash. Man, I'd love if Arda Guler somehow just randomly started. Take set pieces, 3,900. He's an attacking midfielder. It's probably never going to happen, but it would be awesome if it did. Not a ton else down there. Like you only really have to worry about one slot because you're going to play De Bruyne in one of them. That's who to go around him. D, there's David Raum. He is my favorite guy on the slate. He gets you a non-city piece, so there's one of your spots already. There's not a ton of defenders here, as I've talked about before for city slates. Like, their defenders aren't where their big points are. So, like, I'm playing around for sure. If Rico Lewis is in, he'll probably be my other defender. If he's in, is an attacking mid or something, or just further up the field than right back is what I mean. So, Ram's the best. If Rico's in, in midfield, not bad. And then, I don't love the rest, really. Like, Carvajal's not bad for that cheap. John Stone's in the midfield is not bad for that cheap. Yellar for just an ultra, ultra punt between the salaries, not bad. But, yeah. Like, I'm playing Realm. I, I'll just end up playing who fits in the rest of the team. Goalie. Ederson, I see being the most popular keeper. And City have not been super reliable defensively, so, like, I'm scared of that a little bit. I could see myself potentially going... I wish it was fucking. I'm sorry, I'm a Sawyer. I, I know I did Sawyer. I wish it was Courtois instead of one of these clown goalkeepers who are typically not very good. We've seen how big Courtois has been. Like he, I'd plug him in for sure if I if if he was there. Now it's a bit of a decision to make for me between whoever starts Real Madrid and Ederson, or even punting all the way down to like a Grabara. I think is not the craziest way to go for both getting a second team and salary relief. So goalkeeper, just a variance-based position. Play who fits, play who you like. Like, I don't think there's a ton of advice I can really give there. In terms of a core, Kevin De Bruyne, I'm playing. David Raum, I'm playing. I'm probably hauling for cash. That's probably where I'd start. I'd, I'd put another city forward. Most likely with them. Maybe I go Vinny Jr. if I'm feeling real frisky. Like he's super solid. But it's other forwards, a pretty, pretty open to debate spot. Same with midfielder. Like if you go Tony Kroos or go another city spot, like I don't think there's a huge gap there in terms of ability. The two gamer. There's only some ways you could go. But I'm starting with these three for cash. I'm probably starting most of my GPP builds the same way. Holland's the guy I'll probably get off of the most in GPP. Like, Rama De Bruyne, my most, two most shown guys, and I'll have in every build, probably. So, yeah, guys. Good luck. UCL back. I'm excited. It's not those eight gamers of the past for classic slates, but uh, two gamer. I'll take UCL where I can get it. So, uh, good luck, guys. Have fun.